the funniest TV commercials. Jim Davidson has another collection here on BBC One at 10.35. A magnificent setting, two great teams, what drama here. And Seaman, what a magnificent save. Not good. Welcome to They Think It's All Over with David and Rory as a top England batsman who spends his spare time promoting quick cricket, a version in which the game is all over in 30 action-packed minutes, otherwise known as the Ashes. Mark Butcher. <laughs> With Phil and Jonathan is a triple gold medal winning rower who has got married since he was last on the show. He says he's blissfully happy with his new partner, but he still keeps in touch with his first wife, Sir Stephen Redgrave. <laughs> it's Matthew Pinsent. <laughs> we kick off with a sporting spat. Phil, Jonathan and Matthew have a look at this. This summer, the Olympic Games return to their spiritual home, Greece, after 108 short years. But the Olympic Organising Committee have managed to enrage a group of hardcore Greek traditionalists. So just what have they done to upset them? Phil's team. Well, we've got Matthew in. Welcome, Matthew, yes, to yeah, the Olympics. Three-time Olympic champion, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Three gold medals. Unbelievable. Thank you. You must be, I guess you're in training for the next Olympics now, yeah? Of course, Athens. When, yeah. when, when is it? Uh, there are six months and 28 days until the final. Till the final? Oh, oh, oh cocky! <laughs> no, no, I'm just hoping to go, and if we reach the top ten, I'll be delighted, you know, yeah. Do you miss uh, Sir Stephen Redgrave? Not really, no. You could, but you were very close, weren't you? Yeah. Do you ever call his name out when you're making love? <laughs> Only when he's there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, the Olympics, I believe... The original Olympics, not the modern Olympics which began, when was it, uh, 18... 1896. 1896, The original ones, way back then, they were all in the nude, were they not? They probably were, yeah. I think we should campaign to bring that back. <laughs> Can you imagine the audience figures you get when they televise the female weightlifting? Can you imagine? <laughs> Squat, thrust, follow through. Can you imagine? <laughs> the men's relay race might get a bit messy. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't want to let go, would you? <laughs> People begging for another lap. <laughs> but you know what, though? I think, uh, I, I, you know, I think it's great that it's going to be uh, in Greece and Athens because it's, uh, you know, it's the cradle of civilization. And yet we know so little about Greece in this country. What do we think of when we think of Greece? We think of hairy women and stuffed vine leaves. That's essentially it. And yet you think of the great things. You think of the, the great things that, that Greece has given us. Philosophy. F philosophy. Democracy. Democracy. Hold on, are we watching Shirley Valentine? <laughs> <laughs> Is it anything to do with the uh, dog population in Athens? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't go into Phil's dressing room just before we started. I, I warned him, I said, don't hang around with him. A couple of weeks ago, Greg Rzeski just got stuck in a lift with him. Look at him. <laughs> you can't breathe in when you're looking at him. <laughs> There was something that I, uh, that I, I was asked to sign a petition that, that uh, was going to be saving all the dog population because they were going to try and destroy all the stray dogs in Athens in time for the Olympics and it was something about how appalling this was and whatever. So did you sign this, this petition? No. Right. <laughs> no ideas at all? We don't know. Well, the answer is, it's all to do with the mascots. According to the Greek Society of the Friends of the Ancients, the two cone-shaped club-footed figures, called Athena and Phoebos, insult the ancient Greek religion and identity, while others have described them as tasteless and a national catastrophe. Let's have a look at them, shall we? <laughs> look pretty good to me. The British Olympic Association are also upset and have accused the Greeks of ripping off our very own Olympic mascots, the Roonies. <laughs> 
Britain has high hopes in the upcoming Olympics for the modern pentathlon as long as it's held in Falaraki and includes our strongest events, sunburned crabs and the drunken balcony plunge. <laughs> David, Rory and Mark, it's a retirement question for you. Watch this. Here's Ginger Dynamo Gordon Strachan leading Southampton to last year's cup final and Premiership safety. But just last week he announced he was retiring as manager of Southampton in order to get his hip fixed and go on a luxury cruise. So what was it that finally caused Gordon's hip to give out on him? David's team. So um, now that you've retired you can slag people off, can't you David? A little bit. So let's start with Gordon Strachan. Have you ever played against him? I have. How was that? <laughs> it, was, it was different. What, he didn't <laughs> score against you? <laughs> no, he <laughs> didn't. No, we didn't. No, no, we once, I was playing uh, against Leeds with Arsenal and... Um, one of their strikers came in on the tackle and then studded me up my thigh and then straight into my um, gonads. And as I'm swirling on the floor and everything, Strachan's come up, he's going, get up, you big tart. <laughs> and as I pulled my shorts back, obviously I'd split my, you know what, and there was, blood, there was blood everywhere. And he went, oh, no, he went, oh, sorry, big man, sorry, big man. <laughs> <laughs> so he saw that as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you've added that bit in. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second, I know we've been making light of, of issues here, but you know, I think it's worth pausing for a second to think about, you know, someone who's been at the very top of his game, who is leaving, some of us believe, before he needs to, mm. who's given of himself for many years, tireless, excellent service, and is now leaving without so much as a proper farewell. Mm. So I'd like you all to join me in saying to Kilroy, we'll miss you. <laughs> I bet you're looking forward to your retirement, aren't you? I am. You can let your hair down now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that either. <laughs> the bad news is, of course, that you're now a pensioner in Manchester. The good news is for you, Howell Shipman's dead, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a very touching um, tribute. I think it was Nicholas and Elka. Nicholas and Elka, yeah, he had Nicholas a T-shirt. Had a T-shirt, yeah. well, was it Man City versus Leicester in the cup? And, That's right. And Elka yeah. scored and took his T-shirt off and there it was... Um, David Seaman, we love you, wasn't it? That's right. About your retirement. And I'd like to make a little comment on David's retirement as well. <laughs> <laughs> so David, you know, we, we joke about what are you going to do now? What, what are your plans? Do you know what you're going to do? I'll be doing goalkeeping coaching. And For whom? Don't know yet, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but I know a lot of clubs are interested. I've heard that Alex Ferguson wants the stud rights, do you? <laughs> So he was moving at Man City on, uh, on Saturday, wasn't it, the tribute? Oh, that was great. It was uh, quite emotional before, because what the lads did, they did like uh, uh, both, lines, both teams out there. I went down the middle and it was oh, and really good. Something Got a nice little silver... Yeah, silver salvo, wasn't it? <laughs> I told you, I'd win things at Man City. <laughs> but I like the way you like, held up to the crowd like that. <laughs> this bloke with broken collarbone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently the... Sigh of relief at your retirement measured 3.5 on the Richter scale. <laughs> <laughs> I should imagine, actually, on the contrary, I bet Man City are very sad to see you go. Especially after they spent all that money putting that special walk-in bar for you in the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> and the panic button at the back of the goal mouth. <laughs> over. Actually, Mark, how did, how did the cricket world react when Phil packed up cricket to do I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? Dressing room attendants around the world are sort of packing up the ashtrays and <laughs> making sure there didn't have to be a little chair out the back for Phil to sit in when he was waiting to go into bat. Yeah. Was and was he popular? Because he can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your goalkeeping jersey? Did you get to keep that? No, they just changed the leading name on the back, haven't they? Just they <laughs> took off my name and put James on it. Oh, Is David funny. James funny? Just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead, you know. <laughs> Strachan's hip injury. Did I read somewhere that he'd, he'd done his hip chasing his wife upstairs because she's wearing a thong or something? <laughs> 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 no, I reckon, well, that's... Three points, well done, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> that's amazing! No. <laughs>
In fact, Gordon Strachan blames his dodgy hip on his wife's short skirt. According to Gordon, after following up the stairs, he was in such a hurry to get to their hotel room that his hip went. Mrs Strachan is now in great demand. Liverpool have already signed her to walk upstairs in front of Gerard Houllier. <laughs> Gordon Strachan is famous throughout football for his impenetrable Scottish accent. In fact, he actually announced his resignation last season, but Southampton's chairman only just worked out what <laughs> hip replacement actually meant. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have no points, and David's team have three points. Now, the other week on the show, you might recall, David did a truly terrible thing. He let down his hair. Let's just remind ourselves of that moment, shall we? She made the face I can Naturally, it prompted a flurry of correspondence from viewers, most of them asking him not to do it again. <laughs> But one email from Hollywood caused quite a stir. Movie executives wanted a copy of the show so they could get David's hair exactly right for a forthcoming film of his life. And they very kindly sent us a publicity still which shows Daniel Day-Lewis as the young David Seaman at the start of his career back in 1863. <laughs> we press on with the treble, Phil's team. Your subject for the treble <coughs> is Sporting Inspirations, and your three are... 11 times darts world champion, and more importantly, born in Stoke, Phil the Power Taylor. World-conquering rugby heroes, Johnny, Jono, Ben, and the others. And record-breaking, round-the-world yachts person, Emma Richards. But which one claims to have been inspired by a fry-up? Who's been motivated by Eminem? And which of them was galvanised into action by Roy Keane, Phil's team? Just going back to the, the nude Olympics, it would be interesting where they put the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's like talking to someone in a different time zone. Isn't it? <laughs> that is Eastern yeah. Seaboard time. Phil, have you got any jokes from last week's show? <laughs> I was just thinking, if you won one or two extra boat medals, you know what I mean, you could... I don't know where you'd hang them, you know what I mean? That was worth waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> you would think initially, all right, let's work... Maybe backwards engineer this, reverse engineer... You would think dart player and food, right? Because they're big fellas, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, you know, they come out... I always get worried when I see them. I always expect to hear, Andy Fordham, you require double heart bypass surgery. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're a big fella, though, aren't you? I mean, I am, you're a big yeah. fit fella, because you have to eat a lot, don't you, to keep your weight up, don't you? Uh, yeah, between five and 6,000 calories every day. Wow! Oh. God, that's almost as much as Firm Britain wolves down. <laughs> <laughs> Round the world, woman. Um. Is that an idea for a TV show? <laughs> <laughs> Bill Tufnell goes around the world on a woman. <laughs> was she on her own, was she? Yeah, solo round the world. Yeah, Does that, oh, solo. Yeah. <laughs> She got all the way around the world like that, got past the finishing line, then couldn't park it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I, reckon, I reckon the fry-up is, is the lady. Right. He's the angry bloke, isn't he? He Roy is. Keane. Roy Keane, very angry. Did, does Manchester. anger serve you well in the rowing business, Matthew? Uh, it can do, yeah. Good bit of anger, you can go for it a bit more, I what suppose. Do you, what gets you angry? Uh, Knighthoods, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Steve Redgrave not doing anything behind me. Uh... <laughs> you know, it would hurt you if you'd been known for years as Sir Stephen Redgrave's bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get five the breakfast and the lady, all right? Yeah. yeah. And then... Rugby Rugby and... blokes, Eminem. Yeah. And then Phil the, the plower Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> he would like Roy Keane White, because he's... Because it's the only one left. Yes, he imagine yes. He imagines he's throwing his darts at him, Nick. Nicholas. No, but I'm going to give you three points because you have got them all correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Phil Taylor was inspired to regain his world crown after Roy Keane needled him for being an ex-champion. England rugby team were inspired to success by Eminem's Lose Yourself at the behest of coach Sir Clive Woodward. And solo yachtswoman Emma Richards revealed that daydreams of fry-ups and the pub kept her going during her round-the-world race. Bizarrely, and this is absolutely true, Emma Richards is going to be accompanied on her next voyage by golfer Colin Montgomery. She says the additional weight won't be a problem. To counteract it, she's going to rig one of his bras as a spinnaker. <laughs> 
Will darts champion Phil Taylor takes his sport very seriously. He practices for three hours of every day. He goes to the gym and has a nutrition regime designed by an ex-army man, one Colonel Sanders. <laughs> David Steen, your subject this week is the secrets of my success, and your three are... £15.8 million rotating Chelsea frontman Adrian Mutu. Bulky bat wielder Andrew Freddie Flintoff. And the Canadian who's still British, world heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis. But who attributes their success to a strawberry? Which one puts it down to chess strategy? And which one reckons it's all due to his mum's cooking? David's team. Flintoff, Mark. What, what can you tell us about him? Um, well, he's a big lad. He's been touted as being the, the new Ian Botham, as of many before him. Um, Why is that then? You like a spliff and a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's his nickname, Flintoffs? Freddy has Freddy to has, has to, to end in a Y. Oh right, yeah. yeah. So yours yeah. should be butchery then. Butchy it? or it's Vaughny. That's my Vaughny. Uh, Thorpey. Yeah. That's <laughs> Graham Thorpe. Um, guilty. That's Jeff Boycott. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine footballers playing chess though, can you? Because they're a bit dim as well, aren't they? I mean, no, no. I mean, can't imagine Beckham and Neville playing chess, can you? <laughs> There's no snakes on this board. <laughs> 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 I reckon, I, re I do think that Mutu flew his, flew his family over for the cooking. I think he likes his traditional like, Romanian goulash. And I think that's so he goes with mother's cooking. What about Flinty? Coffee. Flinty. Freddy. Freddy. Andy Flintoff has got, actually got a strawberry on the, on the back of his back. How long um, have you known this, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> We've You're keeping something back for the last round. <laughs> <laughs> We've been gibbering away talking absolutely bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I point out that Flintoff's got a strawberry on his back? Has he? Oh, that's, so why, why, yeah, do, that's, why, is, why is that then? Well, the, you're allowed sponsorship now on the, on the back of, um, of your cricket bat. It's sort of like a six-inch oh, right? by two-inch sort of tattoo size area on the, on the back of your bat. And, and Andy Flintoff's... Um, Fiance runs a company called Strawberry Promotion, so it's a love thing. <laughs> Which just means Alex um, Lewis well, and chess. Know. What do you reckon? You can't imagine him playing chess. You can't imagine him doing a lot of things, uh, David. But <laughs> 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 is that your final answer? Yeah, you apparently. Apparently. You've got three points. Well, well done. Yeah. 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 In fact, Lennox Lewis believes that studying chess strategy has helped him become world champion. Adrian Mutu claims he loves playing at Chelsea because he gets his mum's cooking. And Andy Flintoff has a strawberry emblazoned on his bat to remind him of his fruity girlfriend. Andrew Flintoff isn't the only cricketer to have had a strawberry on his bat. Mike Gatting had one once. It was all there was left after he'd used his bat to shovel down a trifle during the morning drink spray. <laughs> Before his championship bout, Lennox Lewis abstains from sex for an entire month. Four weeks without sex, followed by a big fight. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Adrian Mutu is so fond of his mother's cooking that he only signed for Chelsea on condition that they flew her in to prepare all his meals. Chelsea are hoping to sign Wayne Rooney if they can do a similar deal with Mr Kipling. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have three points and David's team have six. Now, the new year and England's Rugby World Cup triumph has inspired the whole country, with even the most unlikely people now trying to get fit. Have a look at this. Okay, sensory deprivation time now as we play Field the Sportsman. Phil and Jonathan, you're first this time. If you get up there, take your blindfolds with you. Put your, are you, your hands on. You're going to be coaching then, are you, David? Yes. Did you do any coaching, Phil? 
Well, I tried it, but 60 pensioners going down to Margate, mate, and get a bit smelly, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that one falls on. Can we have our first mystery guest, please? OK, and your time starts now. Oh, my right, God. <laughs> Get out and they come for kill waste. <laughs> He's not here anymore. What was that? It was a gun. Is it a fish? Hey, maybe it's the vet come to put semen out of his misery. Oh, oh, I've just been stabbed. Oh, what's that? You big tart. Oh. What's it, like Kill Bill out here or something? Yeah. Oh, is it the Queen? I've it... finally been... <laughs> I've finally been recognised. Hold on. Oh. oh, this is a strange outfit. Oh, sorry. It's like right. a boo, then some flesh, then some pantalon. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Is it Mrs. Zorro? Mrs. Zorro popped in for a little... Is that a welly? I've got a sword here, uh, Rossi. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm, I'm not playing. I'm just having a good old time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a helmet. Helmet and goggles. Ha My God, she's doing a lot of... She's a... <laughs> we've got sword, gun... It's a sword. Helmet. Ah, oh, what's it called? Sword fences. She's a... No, fence... yeah, it, hepatitis. <laughs> no, um, it's not hepatitis. It's a... Um, Oh, modern Sarge. heptathlete. No, he Modern didn't. pentathlete. Yes. Modern pentathlete. Ladies champion of Olympic modern pentathlete. The world number one, Georgina Harland. Do you know Tony Blair was in today? This is absolutely true. Yeah. Did you see that? There was all the security around. He was doing Paxman, wasn't he? Yeah, he was doing Paxman. And Georgina walks in with a gun and a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Straight past all these security <laughs> And we said, did you have any trouble? She said, no one seemed to notice. <laughs> Rory and David, out you go. Um, I've got these for you to wear, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, no. You gave me a little jab there. Straight through my heart. It's private. <laughs> Now, David, these are gloves, OK? Every time. You don't put on there, David. No, put David, that's what you do. Can I put on, please, Rory? OK. Yes. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK, gentlemen, your time starts now. We're, oh, oh, oh. I've, 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 it's a shoulder, it's broken. <laughs> hey, there's, oh, there's a helmet here. Oh, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> nice helmet. <old. laughs> I don't know, it's, it's, it's Stephen Hawking's after a few Bacardi breezes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's two fat oh, ladies two. on acid. <laughs> <laughs> there's two oh, of them. two helmets. Dear, oh, dear. <laughs> you should... Uh, <laughs> Is this extreme? Yeah, it's from off the, off the buses. <laughs> it's extreme pizza delivery. <laughs> I've retired from all this crappy mess and everything. <laughs> no, you're still here. <laughs> well, oh. it's, it's, um, is it a sidecar? Uh, mm -hmm. yep. European, English, British, world champion sidecar. Uh, champions. Champion, champion pentathlete. Which champions, we need to know the capacity. <laughs> um, <laughs> how much can you drink, Glad? <laughs> <laughs> Four pints, five pints, something, like, um, it's something cc's. 500. 500 cc, oh, sidecar yeah. glass track champions, Lester Goodwin and Andy Stephen. <laughs> OK, so the scores at the end of that round are Phil's team with six points and David's team with nine. OK, we finished with the name game, and this week, Jonathan and Rory will be drawing the clues. The team in the lead goes first, which is David's team. So if you could pass those along to Rory, please, Mark. Mm -hmm. That'd be lovely. As many as you can get. And your time starts now. All right. It's a leg football, it's a footballer. A kick in a boot. Alex Ferguson. Ah, very good. <laughs> good. There you go. Um. <laughs> uh, 
hair. <laughs> that new mint, mint card thing. Is it a darts player? It's one of the fat slags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Rory. <laughs> Oh, it's the, the, the guy, the guy that won yeah, yeah. this yeah. week. Yeah, the Viking. Yeah, exactly. The Viking that's in it. I can't draw uh, any better than Nick, that. Nick, we know. Go on. No. Andy Fordham. Andy Fordham. <laughs> Andy Fordham. Oh, I'll give you a point for what you've got to watch the darts. <laughs> Old fashioned drawing of this person. It's <laughs> <laughs> <As> a judge. Go back, Shandy. I'm medallion, I believe. Oh, jeez. Damn it. Bex! <laughs> what? No, look, Kevin Keegan. Very Kevin Keegan, well done, yeah. <laughs> With his famous number seven medal. <laughs> Sport. Track in the pace. Rugby. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's this play look like? <laughs> <laughs> Martin Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Phil's team, you need eight to win. Pass those to Jonathan, please. Good luck. OK, Jonathan, right, time okay. starts now. OK, on, here we it? go. What's that? That's a, that's a... What is that? Horse. Horse head. Ponytail. Red Dave Seaman. Dave Seaman. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit... All oh, right, OK, this is the sport, is uh, that game. It's supposed to be drawing, not football. football. Yeah, OK, and he's sort of like, looks a bit like this. Big fat Gaza. Blah, blah, blah. Mickey Rooney. No, what's his name? <laughs> 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 name? Didn't even get to draw the pies in. Oh, OK, this is a good one. I'll give you that. Wayne Rooney. Wayne, Wayne Rooney. <laughs> Mickey Rooney. <laughs> what's that? Uh, Barber Papa. Uh, monkey. Monkey face. Monkey. Monkey. Oh, um, uh, Sampras. Pete Sampras. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to Here we go. Here we go. Um, OK, here we go. What's that? That's a that's big... Oh, no. That's Steve Redgrave. Yeah, I'll oh, <laughs> yeah. Here we go in here. Come on, Steve. Yeah, because he's the only one we think of. What we think yeah. of <laughs> <laughs> Crocodile. Um, dog. Dog. What's that? Who's that big nose? Big nose with a dog. Princess Anne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many people? Uh, Float, fella. I love. Uh, Victoria Beckham. Nope. I love Beckham. Footballer. Oh, Gary Neville. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what's that? Michelangelo. Yeah. Keep moving. Keep moving it. Jordan. <laughs> um, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Colin Montgomery. Well done, Jonathan. Colin Montgomery. You moved on to 12 points, but this week's winner <laughs> is David's team with 13. Oh, well done. Thanks to David, Rory, and Mark, Phil, Jonathan, and Matthew. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. <laughs> Are you a budding writer with a sports tale to tell? Then it's time to put pen to paper for Five Live Sports Shorts writing competition. For more details, go to bbc.co.uk slash Five Live. From the funny to just plain bizarre, Jim Davidson has another commercial breakdown at 10.35, right after the news. <laughs>